Welcome to another edition of Mark's Madness. Joined as always by Mark Shine. I'm Matt Finkel. Thank you for joining us tonight. Mark, no more undefeateds. That's no more it. undefeated. That's right. We had three entering this week. They all lost. LCC, Rushi, and Defiance. So before we get into those games, doesn't it make it that much more special what Crestview did last year? Well, it really does. When you think of the 22-game the schedule and you think of, you know, the conference play, non-conference schedule, Crestview, of course, played in the holiday tournament in Van Wert early in the season. And then to go through the tournament, that really is a special thing today. So now let's get into what these teams did over the weekend. And we learned a lot about LCC, Versailles, and St. Henry, three yep. very good teams that we're expecting to make postseason runs. LCC beat Crestview on Friday, right. but then lost for sales in overtime on Saturday. Yeah, and I think, you know, when you look at Coach Kill, um, obviously going down to Versailles was a great game for them because you're playing a good team in their environment and it can only prepare you for the tournament. And certainly you would like to go undefeated. Everybody wants to do that. But what you can learn from a loss can be something very important. Not that you go out and intentionally lose a game, but if you can learn from those situations, which they obviously did because they came back Monday with a nice win over Alter down the flying at the hoop contest, uh, it's a good win for them on Monday, but it's a learning lesson on Saturday night. Better to be challenged now and, and see what the adversity is like in January as opposed to March. I, I would agree with that. And in point in case, look at the Ohio State Buckeyes. Their non-conference schedule, not very good. With the two teams they did play, they lost. Then they get into conference play and they struggle a little bit. Now, I'm not going to criticize Coach Mata. He knows what he's doing down there with the Ohio State program. But I think it's good to be challenged and, and particularly be prepared for the tournament. Let's go back to Friday again for a yep. second because the big one in the MAC that everyone was excited for, St. Henry versus Sales. And Ryan Mike Sell, 33 and 17 in the win. How about that? 33 and 17. And obviously, that's, those are keys. They don't win the basketball game without him doing that. But on the other hand, Mitchell Stallman stepped up with 18 big points. And, and you we'll, talked about that. That's right? right. When we sat here last week, it was who's going to step up and be that extra player to do something special. And defensively, they held Kyle Arns to just 13 points. So, two real positive things, I think, for, for the uh, St. Henry. Uh, Redskins. And then just back to LCC for a second. By the way, all these teams are Division Three, so they yeah. could meet right. in the postseason to get together. That would be exciting. But in that flying to the hoop game on Monday against Alter, Dantes Walton, career high points for him. 30 points. You know, he is really playing. We're going to look at some highlights a little bit later on and some special things when we draw up some plays. But his defensive play has been very important to them, too. And now, you know, he scores consistently. Go to the basket. He can dunk the basketball. He can shoot from the three-point line. He's got a mid-range game. He is really developing an all-around offensive and defensive game. He's definitely come a long way yes, in, in halfway through the season here. How about the Western Buckeye League? Because there's another great game in the Western Buckeye League everyone focused on. OG, or excuse me, Defiance against Salina. Right. And it seems that Salina is now in the driver's seat. Right, they are, and we can talk about that as we go along. They only have, of the top teams left, they only have St. Mary's left. How about this for the schedule maker for Salina this year? They get OG at home, they get Defiance at home, and they're going to get St. Mary's at home. And it kind of works out maybe it's just year to year when those types of things happen. Look at Defiance on the other side. They go on the road to all throw three of those particular teams. But you're right, a good win. And I think it proves something to Salina. They could win a game where they didn't have to outscore you. In that one, they outdefended Defiance. Of course, the other team in the Western Buckeye League that we've been focusing on with a chance at the top is OG. Right. And they've had a tough schedule coming in. We'll talk a little bit about that when we get to our upcoming games because they've got an even tougher weekend coming up this weekend. But for now, let's move our attention to Perry, who just right. continues <laughs> to put up points. They do. They've got three outstanding scores and a couple of other guys who can get you a basket when you need one. Plummy Gardner, you know, he can take the ball to the basket. He makes a three ball occasionally, but can really go to the basket. Kind of the same for Jacoby Lane, Harvey, uh, more of a slasher type player. And then you got Jared Poling, who's just a standstill jump shooter. He can take the ball too, but he's a really, really good stand up jump shooter, three point shooter, over a thousand points in his career. So they've got some really good balance. And when you hear Coach Tabler, it's get on the gas. And every time they get a rebound, every time they get a steal, he's yelling layup, and they're off in transition. Big game, 101 88 last week over Layman. 101 yeah. points. Pretty crazy. My kind of game. Let's get out and play. Now, you obviously, you want to see some defense, too, but uh, I like to see them get out and play. They've been hovering right around they that have. century mark in a couple <laughs> yes. of games, and you said, you know, they can get up and score. You knew that game was going to be high scoring, and you were right on. They're not a very tall basketball team, are the Perry Commodores, but when they want to get out in transition and go, they're difficult to stop. Another team that's very good in transition is Lima Senior, and they've got a busy week. They've got wow. five games in the next seven days. So, as a coach, how do you prepare your guys when you have to play basically every night of the week? Well, you know, first of all, kids do a lot of that AAU stuff. They just play and play and play. So I, I'm, the factors there is not really important. But you think about what they 
did. The Spartans go on Tuesday night to Toledo Central Catholic and get a huge win by 30 over the team who was second in the conference. And that is a huge win over Toledo Central Catholic. Now they have to go back to Toledo again on Wednesday to play Whitmer. And that's a game where you could easily have some type of letdown. But I would bet they will play in that particular situation. But then a home game with St. Francis, and that could be a trap game because the following two games after that are uh, OG, mm -hmm. and then the following week, Lima Central Catholic on Tuesday. So those two middle games in there on the league games with Whitmer on the road and St. Francis at home, I would be concerned about those. Well, they've won five in a row since starting 0-2, and, and then after this week, we'll have five more games yeah. in the books, and the two you mentioned obviously going to be challenging, OG and really, LCC. Really key games. The thing I was interested to see was that Elijah Pugsley had 18 on Tuesday night, and he's had a couple of good games, but then he's had some games where he hasn't scored a lot. If he can consistently get into double figures with some of those other guys like Stafford and Flowers and, and uh, Brown and uh, Shine, those guys, when they get going, of course, I like Thomas. We talked about him last yeah. week on the show. they got a lot of play they play got makers. a lot of guys. If you add what Elijah Pugsley can do, if he gets on a roll and joins that group, that's going to make it even more dangerous. Now let's go to the NWC. And each week we talk about how wide open it is. Yep. Bluffton loses to Paulding. So now it feels like it's even more wide open because we've got Grove, Crestview, Spencerville, all still in good position along with Bluffton to possibly steal this league. Matt, I, I tried to look at that conference and really just break each particular team down, look at their schedules and so on. And I think you're right. I think it's going to be a Grove, uh, Spencerville, or Crestview will win the championship. I think Paulding, I think Bluffton, I think Lincoln View, those are teams that can give somebody problems on any particular night. And then we'll look at Jefferson. Jefferson's last in the conference. They're 0-3 in the conference. They lost by four to Crestview. Uh, they have uh, five losses by five points or less. So I think you look at Allen East maybe, and I think um, uh, Jefferson obviously and Ada, they might sneak up and bite somebody. But I think you're right. The top three teams at the top probably are going to be Crestview, Spencerville, and Grove before it's all over. And Jefferson played Wayne Trace pretty competitively the other night. And we've got a couple of plays we yep. want to show you from that game. Not on the Jefferson side, but on the Wayne Trace Raiders side because they've done a lot of good things offensively. Well, look what happens. First of all, they get to steal. Watch how well they run the fast break. Miller gets wide enough that he gives a bounce pass angle for Corbin Linder. And the whole key is set up by defense, obviously. And we get the trap right here. Here's the steal. But then the key is Miller, who was wise enough to get to the right side of the free throw lane and not jam up things in the middle. Ethan Linder on the left. Corbin Linder makes a nice pass to Miller, who scores and draws contact. And started with the defense, but a, a wise play offensively. And then we're going to look a little bit about Dan Tez Walton, how well he defends. Here's a, a, a ball he tips loose to Cobbs. And then he's going to go in and finish. I'm sorry, that was Dixon. Then he goes in and finishes. But Dan Tez Walton, his ability with long arms to trap and to move, here he's going to get a hand in the passing lane, a steal by in the baseline area, again by Dixon, and they're off in transition again. And this time he's going to go trap the wing pass is Dan Tez Walton. And here's another steal, and again they're out in transition. Watch Kyle Arnn swat this shot in the crowd. But the key is Dan Tez Walton, we talked about his offensive production lately, he is doing so many things defensively for this LCC team. And then this game came down to the wire. we got to show you the ending if we're going to talk yep. about the middle. And that was Trey Cobbs going, getting an and one but missing the free throw. So we go to overtime, and then Versailles took over in the extra session. Here's Bargy for three. He's going to make a couple big plays, a three ball. That stretches the lead out to five. And then with the lead at five again, he penetrates, hands the ball off inside to Marshall. Marshall scores. So the overtime, well played by Versailles to win the basketball game. And that was a great game. Hope you can catch the replay on WOSN at some point this week. But we've got more great games yep. coming up this week. So I want to know which ones do you have your eye on for Friday and Saturday? Handful to choose from. Boy, there really are. I think we'll start in the MAC. Let's look at St. Henry and Marion Local. And for the second week in a row, St. Henry playing a, another top team in the conference to see who comes out on top. Whoever wins this basketball game will be undefeated in conference play. Everybody else will have at least one loss, and they will have the edge heading into the rest of the season. So you've got Kanapke and Bruns, big kids inside um, for, for Marion Local, and of course, Rethman and some other guys who can hit from the perimeter. And then you've got uh, Mike Sell. You say, well, Mike Sell's not going to score against 6'10 and whatever on the interior. Well, I think he can, first of all. And second, he can also step out to the three point line and hurt you out there. So Ryan Mike Sell's the key, I think, obviously, for St. Henry. That's a huge basketball game in the MAC. 
So we've got another big one in the Northwest Conference. We're talking about Bluffton versus Spencerville. How do you see this game unfolding? Well, the loser is going to have two losses in conference play, and that's really going to be difficult. And currently, Crestview and Grove are undefeated in conference play. If you have two losses, you might get a tie in this thing, and that's kind of a slim possibility, but you might get a tie. So the loser of this game is really going to be in some serious difficulties. The winner has a chance to keep chasing Crestview and Grove in the conference race. A lot of scores on both teams. It comes down to kind of a patience from Bluffton. It can spend up tempo things, but I think it's an interesting basketball game. Another interesting game in the WBL is Defiance versus OG. And this, these three teams, so on and Defiance OG, they've played each other, and they all have played each other after this game. Who comes out of this one? Defiance coming off their first loss of the season. Well, it's similar situation to the NWC thing. Each one of those two teams have a loss. St. Mary's and Salina do not have a loss yet in conference play. So the loser is going to have two losses, and to expect Salina and particularly uh, up Salina, maybe St. Mary's as well, to lose two, that's kind of hard to imagine. So the, the winner stays in the league race and hopes that they can, somebody can beat Salina. The loser probably out. Um, defensively, we know how good uh, Defiance is. They typically give up in the 40s. Um, they gave up, what, 20-something to Archibald the other night. They won 40-something yeah. to 20-something on Tuesday night. But it's always very good defensively. OG will try to use their, uh, their quickness and their defensive pressure. They rotate about seven or eight guys around Noah Bramlage and try to make things happen defensively, get up and down the floor. It's kind of whose will can impose himself in this particular game. And that's just on Friday. Now let's yeah. move to Saturday where some non-conference games we're looking forward to. Let's start with Grove and Kaleida, two teams that seem to be playing pretty good basketball at this point in the season. Yeah, they really do. And, of course, Columbus Grove had a setback last week when they were upset on Saturday night in PCL play by yeah. uh, Fort Jennings. So that was kind of a setback game for them a little bit. And now they have a loss, and Kaleida has not lost in the PCL conference play yet. So a huge game for Grove to try to play against a, a Kaleida team that has some good scoring. I like Porter Kratz and what he can do. He can post up inside. He can shoot the ball from the three-point line. Um, they're always very solid defensively, and I think this is a team, you know, uh, Jace Derbyshire, what a year he's having for Columbus Grove and his ability to score. So it could be a very interesting basketball game and kind of, a, again, who has the hot night on a Saturday night. USV Lormy. This is a very interesting game. Fort Lormy's played fantastic through the first yeah. half of this year, and they're running into a pretty good Rams team. They are. They're running against the Rams team that has, what, just one loss against Miller City in and, and a game where Miller City, I think, shot a lot of free throws in the second half. So that's an interesting game. It'll probably be an up-tempo game. Both of those teams like to get it up and go a little bit. I think there'll be a lot of points on the board that night and, and see who has the hot shooting night. Looking forward to that one. Yep. And just a reminder, you can see highlights from all these games that we're talking about on the Sports Report on Friday and Saturday nights, and we'll, we'll get through our rebroadcast schedule a little later. Last game I want to talk about on Saturday, though, I'm a senior OG. And just before you get into this, the last 10 games, including this upcoming weekend, the opponent's record for Ottawa Glendorf, 76 and 36, 40 yep. games over 500. And I said it to you last week, it feels like they always have a tough opponent, and that record certainly backs up that fact. You know, Matt, there's two things that are part of that. First of all, we know OG likes to play good competition, but the other side of it is, if you're a mediocre basketball basketball team, do you want to go and schedule OG? You know, they're, they're not going to go out and schedule teams that, that are 3 and 10 or whatever because those teams won't play OG. So first of all, they like to be challenged. It prepares them for the tournament and, and prepares them for what they want to do and, and really rewards their fans with having a good game for them to see every week. But likewise, they're not going to go out and find somebody who's 3 and 10 and wants to play them. Well, they've had a tough schedule and it's yeah. preparing them for that postseason and still only two losses even throughout yeah. all of that. Now let's turn our attention to the girls' side, and a lot going on there as well. Big matchup on Tuesday night, USV and Arlington with the Lady Red Devils coming out on top. Big night from a sophomore. They really did. Whitney Dodds had 32 in that game. Uh, Sierra Nichols had 12. Whitney Dodds is a sophomore, and she had a very good scoring game. A couple key things in that. That was uh, the first loss for USV. It was a 73-58 game. Two real keys, I think, for Arlington. USV likes to create pressure. They like to, to really get out and attack you defensively and then go in transition. And Arlington only turned the ball over six times. So they were not able to create turnovers, and that obviously gave Arlington a lot more possessions to try to score the basketball. The other thing is Arlington was 5 of 8 from the three-point line. And then, of course, they made some free throws down late. A really interesting non-conference game. I think the thing, type of game that coaches like to schedule because it prepares you for what you want to do and challenges your team. Yeah, Arlington played the game they wanted to play. And they did. Didn't allow USV to get into, into their rhythm. What about LB 
beating Arlington they last did. Thursday as well. Liberty Benton is probably in the driver's seat for that BVC, but a lot of good girls teams. You know, Matt, last year we sat here, and I, I guess we kind of punted a little bit. I wasn't quite sure how to look at, the, at that particular conference. So this week I did my homework, went on the WSN website, and, and let's look at Liberty Benton. Now, in that conference, Liberty Benton is currently undefeated. Lipsick, Arcadia, Arlington, and Riverdale all have just one loss. Okay? Who beat Lipsick, Arcadia, Arlington? The Eagles. Liberty Benton did. So they have wins over those teams. They, are, they play Riverdale later on uh, in February, I think it's February 7th. So Liberty Benton already has wins over the other top three teams and still have the fourth team to play yet. And of course, if those teams only have one loss, they have to play each other yet. So Liberty Benton is in the driver's seat in that conference. They've got a lot of talent on that team and Division One talent in yep. Katie Simon. And then Lauren Cody, is she's 6'3". She'll be playing Division II college ball next year. Nicolette DeVincentis is a junior. Yep. They've got a lot of good talent. DeVincentis is a three-point shooter. The other two, you know, we kind of joked about this earlier. When I first got around high school girls basketball back in the 70s and 80s, you couldn't find a high school girl who was six foot tall. They were all 5'11 and a half. You look in the program, you see the 5'11 and a half girl, you knew she was six foot or taller. Now we've got 6'3 and 6'1. How about... About you know how lady basketball players have matured in that respect, but you're right. When you've got six three and six one inside, when you've got a three ball shooter on the perimeter, you've got good coaching from Coach Irwin. That's a really good basketball team. Fort Laramie has impressive girl wins on the girls' side, including over Versailles, yep. New Knoxville, and Minster's been playing well. The MAC is a totally different beast. You've got Marion Local in there, and and just a, a lot of great basketball on the girls' side down south. They really do, south of us. And of course, you know, we've talked about Bath multiple times about how good they're playing in our particular area. Crestview's good over in the Northwest Conference, but you're right. Um, right now, in south of us, uh, the MAC and the Shelby County League, there are some really good basketball teams. And uh, really interesting how those two conferences are gonna play out. I like Fort Laramie, and I've not seen Marion Local live yet. Looking forward to that. And Nan Steck shoulder at Minster, Every year her teams get better. We used to talk about Bob Sagerson's teams here at LCC. They were like gardens and they grew as the season went along. So does her team down there at Minster. Well, the Flyers right now are ranked second in D4. Fort Laramie is ranked seventh. Lipstick ninth in the yep. D4 latest polls. D3, Liberty Benton's third. Versailles is 10th. Bath is ranked 10th in D2. So well represented on those polls. Let's get to our rebroadcast schedule. It starts off with a girls game on Friday at 9 p.m. Crestview versus Lincoln View girls. And then Friday at 10, Ottoville versus Miller City boys. Friday at 10.44 on WTLW, immediately following the sports report, Van Wert versus Elida boys basketball. Saturday, we get you started in the afternoon with ONU women's basketball live versus Capital. That should be fun. Saturday at 7.30, Lipsick versus PG Boys. Saturday at 9 p.m., Marion Local versus St. Henry Boys. Mm -hmm. Really looking forward to that one. And then Saturday at 10.30 p.m., Wapakoneta versus New Bremen Boys. Also Saturday at 10.30 p.m. on WTLW after the Sports Report, Bath versus LCC Boys. Three more games for you on Sunday. Starts at 6 p.m., USV versus New Bremen Girls. Sunday at 7.30, Perry versus Allen East Boys. Sunday at 9, OG versus Lima Senior Boys. What a way to end the weekend. Well, and also, just a quick yeah. point, we're going to have a Jerry Snodgrass yeah, that's right. on one of our broadcasts this weekend. He's the that's assistant right. commissioner of the OHSA. Hey. Jerry Snodgrass is going to join Mark Miller and I when we do the Ottoville and Miller City game. And... Jerry used to work with us here. Obviously, he was the athletic director and basketball coach for a long time at Finley High School. He used to work with us here some before he got involved with the OHSAA. So not only will we be talking Ottoville, Middle City, we'll have a chance to quiz Jerry on some things going on in the OHSAA as well. Really looking forward to that. He's going to have some great insight as we get ready for tournament time. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of Mark's Madness. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, as always, to Mark Shine. And we'll see you right back here next week on the West Ohio Sports Network.